Tool the third. The views expressed do not necessarily reflect the views of this station, its management, or Beasley Media Group. All right, good afternoon, greater Philadelphia area. This is Tool Time Real Estate Radio on WWDB, 860 AM. I'm Tom Tool. She's Stacy Mitchell, and we also have Sarah Timon in the house. And again, we work with the Tom Tool Sales Group at Remax Mainline, the number one Remax team in Pennsylvania and Delaware since 2018. We're streaming on Facebook and YouTube. You can just Google Tom Tool Sales Group. And the first piece of news we have today, I feel like we're going back to the future. We've jumped into the DeLorean and Redfin is now allowing buyer agents to tour, excuse me, Redfin is now allowing buyers to tour homes without agents using ADT security systems to monitor the properties. I, I don't know how to feel about this. This is, this is some pretty big news. What do you ladies think about all this? I don't know how I feel about it either. Um, <laughs> it's, it's interesting. So they're basically allowing um, buyers to go in, use an app. Um, so everybody is, you know, pre pre-approved in that, like you can't just walk up and, and walk into the house. You have to schedule mm -hmm. the showing, um, be vetted, and then you're allowed access into the home. Um, it's, it's interesting. I mean, it could give, especially in some of these fast, uh, fast paced, um, home sales, it could allow a, a buyer to get in, you know, that day, if they've got a little bit of time and they can get it scheduled, they can get out there, they can take a look and then decide if it, if it is something that they're really interested in or not. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. What it's do you a, think, Stacey? My first thought was like, oh my gosh, how are they doing this? And then, um, with a little more research, I found out it's for vacant properties. So that's a little bit more, okay, I can understand that. And they partnered with ADT security. So ADT um, has the security hooked up within the home and, you know, the buyers are all pre-vetted uh, with Redfin. <clears throat> so it's not like just strangers are able to walk in and through the ADT, ADP or the Redfin app and ADT, uh, they're given the code to, to be able to access the home. If you know, the, actually the security system stays with home. So the new buyers do get that added value, um, with the security system, but I don't know. It's, uh, it, it's still kind of, um, I don't know what to think because I think there's a, when buyers go through on their own, there's going to be a lot of questions. You know, I, I still think there's value in having someone there representing you and, and helping you out through the process and answering questions and going through moving, you know, how the process moves forward. So I understand why Redfin's doing it to kind of help buyers um, make a quick decision, especially in this market. It's not for every, every home, obviously. It's for vacant houses, but uh, it's very interesting. Mm-hmm. And then I think it did also say that they would be, you would be monitored while you were walking through, which I mean, given the security systems that many people have in place as is today, that's already going on. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no funny business in there. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that, that's one thing you got to safeguard against for, for sure. I think there's a couple of complications with this, and this is what's going to be interesting. What I know is that our MLS, the bright MLS does not allow buyers to go through without MLS subscribers on, on listings like that. You get fined for this and whether it's vacant or not, I'd love to say it's never happened. I know for a fact there are agents that will like give out lockbox codes, let people in, leave, not be there. So th that's part of the challenge here is that you brought up a great point that people need guidance when they're going through. Most consumers don't know what the heck they're looking at when they go look at a house. So that, that's issue number one. Number two, Redfin is a member of the Bright MLS. They put their listings in there. So that's not really compliant with that. I know there's other MLSs across the country. Um, the Northern Kentucky uh, MLS, for example, they have the same thing. And actually, like if you Google it, that's the first one that comes up. So that's going to be a challenge. Like, is the MLS going to be okay with this in these different markets? Obviously, the seller is agreeing to it. Mm -hmm. And what we've seen is that the MLS doesn't always care what the seller thinks, even though it's their house as judged by the clear cooperation policy where they say, well, you have to do this or you're going to get fined. So that's a major challenge. Number one. Uh, what I also know about Redfin is that they have tried to literally like eliminate the buyer agent. This isn't their first attempt to do this. They also have their uh, Redfin direct, which is 
Uh, it allows people to make offers on homes by answering a series of questions with no agent involved whatsoever. Could you or I or the th one of us, one of us three do that? Sure, that'd be fine because we know what we're doing and we know the right questions to ask or how to answer the questions. But imagine if we're in our market here and a house has a septic system or a, or stucco, and it says, "Would you like to elect one of these inspections?" And they just check no because they have no idea what it means. That could be a tens of thousands or hundred of thousands improperly answered question for a buyer. So that's another challenge that's there. And, you know, Redfin's whole model is they want to say, help consumers save. They want them to make more money or, or save more money. I, I get where they're coming from on this. I think there, there's going to be some security issues, right? And there, there could be things that even if you're being monitored, I mean, people know how to navigate. This isn't going to be like the top of the line ADT system. It's valued at $899. It's going to have a pre-installed smart lock, a security panel, and sensors. I didn't see anything about cameras in there. Mm -hmm. So who the heck, what if there's like three people in there at once, right? right? And um, so th there, there's a lot of holes in this. If I was Redfin, I'd be worried about getting sued, number one, because I think there, there's going to be a challenge there versus someone's in there that has a vested interest that shows on the property. Because, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I've had people, I've had sellers flip out about like a door being left unlocked, let alone damage to the property or something else. So I don't think this is as easy as they're anticipating. Now for vacant homes, you know, still you got that same issue, but imagine it's wintertime and someone doesn't close the door right. and then there's a pipe that bursts. I mean, there's, there's all these risk factors that people aren't getting. And maybe this system's going to have one of those, like you hit the button on your phone and it locks the house. Like you see in the commercials. I don't, I don't know the details of the system. Um, they're saying that there's a lot of security features in there. And there's also a $100,000 um, loss or damage insurance policy on the home. But again, a burst pipe could be a lot more than that. Right. Or a fire or theft, anything. I mean, you could leave, someone could leave a back door open, windows open. You don't know. Water running. It, it does open up the door for a lot of liability on Redfin. And when um, they are vacant homes, I yeah. mean, if uh, water was left on or something, I mean, that could be going for depending on how often showings are coming through, I mean, it could be a substantial amount of time before a problem's realized. Mm -hmm. Well, think about the buyer agent that tries getting a hold of a Redfin agent, which I mean, th oh. there's nothing harder in the world <laughs> than getting a Redfin agent on the phone because they're out showing properties all the time. And who, who's like, who's managing this? So right. I think that's another challenge because like, let's say the water's been running even for an hour. I mean, this happened to a neighbor of mine where he had a defective like valve in his like kid's bathroom's sink. They were gone for an hour and a half and it cost $400,000 worth of damage. Wow. So even, even like 90 minutes right. could, and that's, that's going to far exceed this hundred thousand dollar policy. Mm -hmm. Obviously we're talking about extreme examples here. I don't know if this was that well thought through is my point. Now, mm -hmm. maybe they're in markets where you don't have cold weather. I don't know. I mean, the, most of the testing markets are like Florida, Texas, California, those sort of places. So I do see some challenges here. Uh, so would you feel comfortable listing your home like this? No way. I, I would never only because I don't I, I'm not that trusting of a person. <laughs> um, and I just feel like, yeah, OK, I know buyers could come through. But if they do leave something open, even if it's accident, accidental, um, you know, if the people in the neighborhood or people driving through know the house is vacant, vacant homes are a target anyway. For, sure. for many different reasons. Get the pipe stolen. Exactly. Copper. It's gone. Appliances gone um so i i just would never do it that's just my opinion though <laughs> what about you sarah you live in the city right so i think there's other challenges that come along with like a city versus suburban sale i mean you know there's, there's a lot going on here yeah i mean honestly i i don't think that i would i i want there to be an agent walking through with anybody that's going through because also i think in a lot of cases it's about the quality of the people that are coming through sure. and not the quantity do you want the person that can't um you know, schedule it and and get out with an agent? Do you want the person who is just at the very early stages who might not have talked to an agent yet? And it's just like, oh, cool, I can get in here without one. And then they're poking around, they're looking at, I mean, who knows what they're doing. But um, even if they're walking through and just doing like a perfectly acceptable showing, like how quickly are they going to be able to turn that into writing an offer and getting it in? Like I would want as a seller, you know, quality um potential buyers coming through and not just mm -hmm. anyone because like you know how we'll like often say you know at open houses you get you certainly get a lot of quality people but you also have a lot of just like the neighbors who want to walk through and take a look 
I mean, you might end up, I don't know what if they're sending out stats for you to take a look at. And then you're like, oh my gosh, like all these people have come through. And then like maybe half of them were neighbors that just wanted to like take a look. Um, and and that can be that can be disappointing. So and what is Redfin's vetting process for for the buyers coming through? Great question. I'm on their website. I was gonna go there next. So great minds. I'm on their website. Do you verify buyers who tour the home? Here's the answer. We verify the identification of every person who self-tours using the same ID verification we use for standard Redfin tours. It does not say anything about pre-approvals whatsoever. Right. And I know there's clients, and, and I, you've had this happen to you too, Sarah. I know I've had clients who are very good clients of mine. They say, you know what? We're just going to use a Redfin agent to tour the home, and if we're serious, we're going to make the offer through you. We don't care. And they've signed contracts with me, so I'm protected in, in that regard. Now, that might be a procuring cause issue. I told them not to do that. This is what's being shared. That's happened to you too. Uh, I, I mean, do you want to kind of explain that? Like, the, like the people look at the home and then they, like, they, they're like, "Hey, I don't, I don't want to work with this agent. They don't yeah. know what they're doing." Yeah, I've, I've had that where somebody came through with another agent, called me, said they wanted to work with me, <laughs> um, and, um, yeah, you know, sometimes people will just use the, you know, go through Redfin to to get out and and to take a look at some some places. Um, so that's that certainly that certainly goes on. So, and I, I think people look at them as, you know, we talk about, uh, we're going to get into the Tom Ferry Summit next and some of the biggest takeaways. And one of the takeaways that I got was you can't be a high paid clerk anymore. And this is like the exact definition of a clerk. You're going to open the door. We'll put your listing up. We'll let you know if there's a problem. And it even says in here, uh, this feature is available to all buyers, whether you're working with an agent or not. So you know, I, I think this is obviously a play to get the listing business, uh, but they're only ide uh, verifying identification. And I know, you know, we've had sellers that want us to go so far as, hey, send the pre-approval letter before you come out so we can tour the home. Or, you know, are, are you only showing the pre-approved buyers and, and, and all these other things? So, you know, to me, it's while we know the market moves fast and there's certainly going to be some buyers that are going to want to get in right away and they can't make it happen. And, and the Redfin spokesperson comes out and said, her name's uh, Bridget Frey. She's the chief technology officer. In this hot market, more than a third of homes are finding a buyer within the first week, and buyers are hustling to see homes as quickly as possible. Thanks to advances in automation and smart home technology and changing customer expectations, we're able to offer a convenient and safe self-touring option that would have seemed outlandish just a decade ago. Th th that, that all may be true. I I'm clear there's some holes in the process here. Like, If you're really going to do this, personally for me, I'd want to see cameras up. I don't want to have an app I can monitor who comes in and out or it's recorded. Um, I wouldn't want to be living there when that's going on. I want to be able to confirm the showings myself, similar to like a showing time app or, or something like that. And then on top of it, I'd want to see their pre-approval letter and financial statement uploaded. Like if they're just coming through it, it literally on their website, it says, uh, what's the self tour with a tap right? touch of a button and unlock it. Like, I mean, and, and so, yeah, they're getting their identity, identity verified, you know, well, what does that mean? Yeah. Just well, like their driver's license? The, yeah, I think or, that's all it is, right? Right. That doesn't verify much. It just verifies right. they have an, you know, they have a driver's license or an ID. Um, it doesn't verify that they are truly serious buyers. What time do they offer these tours? Or is it? It's, it's not 24 hours. That's another oh, question. Oh, okay. Eight that was eight. my question. Eight to eight. Yeah. Eight to eight. Okay. Yeah. I just thought, I don't know. There's a lot of holes. I could see a lot going sideways and a lot of things going wrong with this type of situation. Now, what we don't know is how many, how often this is being utilized. Um, it's in, uh, apparently there's 22 markets where um, they're able to do that. And they list places like Austin, Orange County, Seattle, San Francisco, Vegas, Denver, Dallas, Boston, and Phoenix. So, you know, I mean, it's, I, I just don't, I don't, I don't know that it's fully thought out yet. Now, sometimes it's just better to get it done and then roll it out and figure out the problems later until there's like a lawsuit. And that, mm -hmm. Like that's not the kind of problem I want to be figuring out. I agree. So do you see this happening more? Like, let's talk about the, like five years from now, are other companies going to adopt this? Is this going to be a common thing? Because my view is there's something to this here. I just don't know if it's being executed properly right now. Yeah, it depends. If they work the kinks out and they don't have anything, you know, like something major happen um, and they, they get a little bit more in depth with the vetting process for the buyers. I think that's really important, especially if you're a seller. Like you said, you'd want to know who's coming through and have cameras. They're going to have to expand this in order to make it something that's going to become 
uh, more commonplace. Yeah. I mean, I can see the appeal to it. I can see how there certainly, um, you know, could be pros there for, for the buyers. Um, but yeah, I think they're going to have to kind of work out, work out some kinks and, and maybe see what kinks come up <laughs> once they start, you know, once they, once they get out there and, and start doing it. Have you ever had a seller ask you, Hey, if this person comes to tour my property, do not let them in. Mm -hmm. That's happened to me. Mm -hmm. Right. So, I mean, think about that. Like if you don't have a way to control this and vet this, let's say it's, I mean, we can go very, you know, into, into like the, uh, a, a crazy place here. This is not that unreasonable. Let's say it's like an, an ex that there's a bad relationship with, yes. or maybe it's a, it's a business partner that they're trying to recover something out of the house or maybe, I mean, there's, there's crazy people out there, you know, probably more than people realize, at least, at least in my view. And they could come in and do something to the home. So if you don't know the identify identity of these people and you're not able to verify it yourself, like there's got to be a seller control on this. Uh, my view is a little different, like in, in a perfect world. So let's jump in the DeLorean again. That's okay. a back to a future reference. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, just Google it. Um, so you, you, you have like, you walk into the home, you slide your ID through, or maybe it's even like a thumbprint on the, on the, on the front so they can verify who it is. Then you go in and there's maybe a drone that flies around with you with a camera that kind of tracks all your moves and everything else. And like the seller can tune in on their phone and watch it. That to me is much more viable than, Hey, we got an automatic lock, a security panel and a couple sensors. And with the drone, maybe there is somebody who's <laughs> behind the drone there to answer questions. Ah, you know, like a person at, okay, I'm watching live. Yeah, like, streaming, like a virtual assistant like a virtual or assistant. Yeah, someone like that. Mm -hmm. Because then you got to worry about like overlapping tours and stuff too. So I think it, it, cause I mean, I know, I don't know about you guys when you show a home, but when there's like more than one buyer there, like the buyers get like a no, like it looks yeah. like there's like a fight that's going to break out yeah, sometimes. Right. right? They're all side eye and everything. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Everybody's looking at their phone to see like right. whose time slot it yep. actually is. You know, like I've still got five more minutes in here. <laughs> like, what? And that's, that's happened a lot since the pandemic broke out where we have like 15 minutes to go look at properties. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I do see a way that this can become something that would actually work. So do, do you see this catching on? Like, t talk to me about how this plays out 12 months from now. We're going to see more of this, less of this, because Redfin's done this before and it hasn't taken off and they haven't penetrated all the markets yet. Yeah, again, I go back to um, if, if, if they increase um, the service to this and, and make it more secure. I think security is a big thing, especially for the sellers. Um, uh, the, in some situations, it's probably great for some sellers who who are maybe they're investors and they want to offload a property very quickly. Whatever, there's different situations for everybody. But I think for if it's your own property, if you if it's your only investment and it is vacant because you had to move on somewhere, I don't know. I I'd, I'd be um, pretty apprehensive. But if they expand on the security aspect of it. Um, to make it much more broad and vet buyers more because there's, like you said, people there to exploit every situation. Mm -hmm. And if people find out that this is going on, they could start exploiting this. Um, so I think if they expand on the security, it could catch on. It could become an option, you know, as an add on to well, some for some listeners. Th there is some value here for consumers too. I mean, imagine, mm -hmm. and, you know, this isn't people like us on our team, but. I can't get a hold of my realtor. I need to get into this house. Mm -hmm. I mean, we hear that. Like, I'll get calls on listings. I'm sure you have too. Hey, my realtor's not available. Can you show it to me? Right. But we're going to use them anyway, so don't worry about it. So this kind of safeguards against that to, to a certain extent. Um, I think there's some there, there's some big negatives that we talked about. I think the, really the person that benefits here is the buyer the most because otherwise, like a seller, I don't I don't see that big of an upside here for this. Um, and if I'm a buyer and I'm not who I am and not a real estate agent, I want, I want a little bit of advice on what I'm looking at. This doesn't be anything crazy, but hey, this is like the wrong side of the street to be on because you got like a like a power plant behind you or something. Like, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. there's there's people that buy all sorts of homes, but that extra advice can go a long way. So, you know, I think this is another way that major companies are looking to eliminate real estate agents from the transaction, and that's what Redfin does, man. That's what they always talk about. So, uh, that's why they put their people on salary, work them like dogs, and then you can never get a hold of them. <laughs> so we'll leave it there. Great ending note. So we're going to come back. We're going to talk about the Tom Ferry Success Summit. We've got some major takeaways. This is Tool Time Real Estate Radio on WWDB 860 AM. Buying a home or already own one? We can help. 
I am Kevin Hamill from Alliances Insurance Agency. If you haven't reviewed your policies in the last three years, now's the time. New home buyers, there are a number of ways that we can help you get to that settlement table. Call us to find out more at 610-816-0043, extension 3, or visit our website, alliancesinsurance.com. Don't forget the S, it's for savings. Have you considered a career in real estate? Do you want control over your income? Whether you have a license or not, call us today at 610-692-6976 or visit tomtool.com. Join our team, the Tom Tool Sales Group at REMAX Mainline. When you're getting a mortgage, you shouldn't have to sacrifice great service just to get a great rate. At Mortgage America, we've been lending with this philosophy for over 35 years. We have access to great low rates without the complications and delays of big or online banks. We're a local Pennsylvania lender with loan officers that you can actually meet. As PHFA's number one lender, we specialize in all residential mortgage programs, including first time buyer programs and low down payment options. For your free pre-approval, call us at 610-439-8000 or apply online at mymortgageamerica.com. The real estate 15 seconds. Hi, have you considered taking advantage? Call the Tom Tool Sales Group at Remax at 610-692-6976 or visit our website tomtool.com to connect. Stand by. These market conditions. Welcome back to Tool Time Real Estate Radio on WWDB 860 AM. I'm Tom Tool. She's Stacey Mitchell. She's Sarah Timon. And again, we work with the number one REMAX team in Pennsylvania and Delaware since 2018, the Tom Tool Sales Group. We are streaming live on YouTube and on Facebook. We've got our man Nick Wolf behind the camera. I'm actually going to hope he chimes in on this because he was at this event. So we're going to be talking about the Tom Ferry Summit. So if you don't know who Tom Ferry is, he's the number one real estate coach. He's been working with us for about 11 years. Um, really helped our business in, in ways that I don't think people even really get, um, including getting on the radio and being on the show and, and, and kind of figuring out how to, how to navigate all that. So this was like the first big in-person event that I've been to probably in two years. There was like 3,500 people there. Nick was there. We were doing shows, doing all sorts of stuff. And we had a lot of people from our team there, which was really exciting. And one of them had like jo Curtis had he like joined like a week ago. And I'm like, hey, we got an extra ticket. He goes, I'm in. And like literally jumped on and like booked a flight to Dallas in five seconds. So that was really cool. Um, and that's the kind of opportunities we offer at our team. So if you're a new agent thinking about getting into the business, check out realestatescholarshipprogram.com. We'll take care of your license. We'll make sure you have the right guidance to start your career off on the right foot. And what I want to talk about today with, with you two and Nick, you're going to chime in and give us your takeaway at the end. So be ready. Give you some time to think about it. I'll be ready. All right. <laughs> Rare appearance by Nick on the show here. Uh, so we went around uh, at our team meeting uh, last week and we talked about the people that went and I'll give you their names, what their takeaway was. And I want to kind of hear your feedback on this because you guys weren't there and, and, you know, just kind of hear for the realtors that are out there, how they can implement this stuff in their business. They're looking to really ramp up or hit their goals or have a better quality of life, which is one of our, part of our mission is to have a great life outside of real estate. So let's jump in. And before I do that, real estate coaching. If you haven't heard of it before, and obviously both of you have been exposed to this now, what did you think of when I first mentioned that to you? And what do you think of it now? Because I think it's, it's a very different view here of like real estate coach. What the hell is that? What do you need a coach for versus, wow, there's a ton of value. I, I'd love to get your perspectives because I, I think it's probably a, I'm a lot different than mine. I'm, I'm a little more jaded. So what do you ladies think about that? Like, like you met me and, and obviously we knew we all both knew each other, all knew each other before we started working together. But you hear real estate coach, what did you think before and maybe after now, knowing what you know now? Well, when I met you and we went through a transaction, I was so highly impressed <laughs> right off the jump, right? So, and when I talked to you about joining the team, I already was impressed about the the service that I had received. So there's, there's super value in that. But when you were talking about, um, you know, the coaching and, and, how you do things differently with your team, our team, our team. <laughs> well, this is before I was, fair, yeah, fair. All right. Before I came on board. Um, I knew that there's had to be value in that. I had no idea what it meant or what it was. And, um, but I knew there had to be something special to it. And then coming on board and actually seeing what, what's involved. Now I go back to like, if you're a new agent and you're like just out there swimming in the ocean and you have no coaching, I, I just, I don't know. I feel 
kind of bad for the new agents who will never get the experience and the opportunity that we have with all the coaching. So it's invaluable. Yeah. I mean, I feel very lucky that I, I joined the Tom tool sales team <laughs> and had the the coaching and everything from the get go and didn't have to, you know, tread water out there yep. um, and, and kind of figure it out, figure it out solo. Um, real estate is a, an industry where there are, are things constantly changing with it. Um, you know, statistics are changing daily. Yeah, <laughs> what goes yeah. on is changing all the time. So having um, someone there to to guide you through it and help you know what's going on so you can pass that on to your clients um, is, I mean, an unbelievable, an unbelievable value um, versus trying to like go out and decipher through all different <laughs> sources what's really going on. You know, it's, it's, it's great. All right, so you know that now, but before we knew each other for a few years before, and you're like, what did you think before? If you ever heard like that, like I, mean, I don't even know if it came up, like we knew each other through like a networking group and some other stuff. When you heard real, if you would have heard real estate coaching before you thought about getting into real estate, what would you have thought? No filter. Um, just don't curse. Yeah, I was about to. <laughs> I mean, that sounds dumb. Yeah, I, well, and and, and that, that I think that's how a lot of people feel. I mean, I thought the same. I felt the same way. I'm like, I don't need a coach. What I've been doing this forever, so I. I the fact that you you know you can buy in and actually get some value from it is great, but everyone has that same reaction, right? Your our experience is a little different because we went through a transaction together. But you know, Sarah and I were in a networking group. You were doing something different, so I think that sounds dumb is a pretty good way to look at it. <laughs> that's what I was hoping you would say because I, I I figured knowing you, that's probably what you, I mean. It's real, right? I think everyone thinks that way. So let's get into the takeaways. And if you don't know who Tom is, just Google him. Awesome resource, great guy, uh, and obviously gives us a lot of support. So the first takeaway we had was from Susan Austin. So she said, for me, and especially as a new agent, my priority is to be unapologetically myself and focus on what I can do differently to stay authentic by building trust and loyalty because the rest of the process is simply transactional. Mindset, mindset, mindset. What do you guys think about that? Yes, mindset, mindset, mindset. It's so true. Um, and to be yourself because that's, you know, it's about relationships. Real estate is about relationships. Um, and trust. So you have to be yourself. And the more that you're yourself and authentic, it's so much better than, you know, trying to be something you're not. Because this is your everyday thing. This is your, it's your business. So you have to be yourself. But it's definitely mindset because you can get beat up. And uh, <laughs> you will get yeah. beat up. I don't think there's a could. So you have to keep that mindset, um, you know, in check at all times. Well, mostly all times. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I, I agree. There's, you are who you are and you have to be you. <laughs> and, um, I think that that really shows through when you are yourself and you're, you're working with people like you are a human, you're not a robot. You're not, um, you're not just some voice on the other end of the phone, like be yourself and let that shine through. And absolutely. Like Susan is so on point there with the, the rest of it is just a transaction, but what you bring to it is what builds beyond it simply being a transaction. Well, it, it, you guys are absolutely right. And I love the, I love the part where she says unapologetically, because I know for, for me, when I got started in the business, I was like, oh, I have to be this like buttoned up professional. And, you know, I felt like I had to act a certain way and do a certain thing. And then the more I was myself, the the more the business grew, right? And I think if, if you do that, especially like in today's world, like people are going to research you. They're going to Google you. They're going to look at your social media. So they're going to understand who you are. And that's what they're buying into as much as the, the process itself. So really good stuff from Susan. Um, Second one, this is from Tim Gola. Um, my takeaway is video, video, video. Apparently, we're just saying things three times here with these. Uh, <laughs> but more importantly, stop waiting for everything to be perfect and just do it. There's a huge opportunity for agents who are willing to lean into video. What do you guys think? Now, obviously, you guys have done video with me many times, so maybe a little different. But tell me more. Yeah, I mean, I, I like that he also put there, like, stop waiting for everything to be perfect. Like, you can drive yourself insane in some of these. Like, if you're rewatching them and you're like, ooh, like, no. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. so for a lot of them now, like, I may, if I'm doing a couple videos or something, I might rewatch one just to make sure, like, the sound is right and, like, whatnot. But, you know, sometimes you just have to do it and send it. And, and it is what it is. And doing a bunch of takes of it isn't going to be, you know, very different, unless if you like do something really stupid in it, <laughs> yeah. you, you like say know. something inappropriate. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think just kind of, um, rather than making it this huge hurdle, just do it and move on. Don't overthink. That's yeah. for sure. 
Yeah. And the video, video, video. Um, yeah, I'm guilty of not doing enough video, <laughs> video, video, uh, which that's a goal of mine to focus more on that. But yeah, again, and to not, it, th nothing is perfect. I think that I, for the most part, have gotten over things not being perfect because things are not perfect in real estate anyway. Um, so that is definitely a good, um, you know, good advice. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just do it. Just do it. So Nick, how often does someone do more than one take of a video and it's never as good as the first one, even if they screw up? Yeah, it's not authentic at all. Yeah, I mean, we, we talk about this all the time that we just keep going if we screw something up in these videos we shoot because it's never going to be as good. And then you're trying to like, oh, I should have said this. I should have said that. Um, so I think that's, I mean, we like literally will not do a second take. We just say, keep going. We'll edit it because you can cut out where you mispronounce something and it's still going to, you're still going to have that momentum. And, and also like, think about the first time you do something when you're pumped up to do it versus like trying to do it again and again and again, it just, it never comes out as good. So I, th I think that's really great stuff by Tim and you know, it's never going to be perfect. Right. I mean, look, yeah. if someone with my face can do video, anybody can. So I think everyone needs to like chill out about how they look, how they sound and just do the video. Do so great stuff from Tim. Uh, so this is from Curtis uh, Maynard. So Curtis had been on our team, like literally, uh, I don't even think it was a week. I think he was onboarding and said, I'm going to go. Now he also, awesome. he also did coach with Tom's company for a year before he started working with us. So maybe that had something to do with it. And um, he came in and said, virtually every speaker said something about consistency. I think goal setting and religiously hitting your daily number is where it's at. What do you think? Well, the consistency is key in everything in life, right? I mean, if you have goals, you have to be consistent in, in what it's going to take to get there, like with anything. Um, so that would play into real estate too. So um, that's what he heard over and over and over again. And that's what we practice at TTSG. You have to be consistent with, you know, your, your daily routine uh, it, when you set your goals, what's it going to take to hit your numbers to where you want to be for your success? Everybody's is different, but consistency is that common, that common thing to get you to your goals. And I think that consistency makes it more manageable. Um, if you every day, like do what you need to do, um, then it's not like at the end of the week or the beginning of the week or whenever, whenever it is that you realize that you, you didn't do all of these things and then you need to get it all done. It seems a lot more impossible. So if you take, you know, just do what you need to do each day as you need to do it. Um, it's smoother, it's less stressful and, um, it's the rewards are definitely there. Well, and, and consistency, I mean, you think about it, like, let's take it away from real estate. Mm -hmm. Imagine if like you just decide you're going to go on a diet and you eat like, well, for you're not, you're going to eat well during the week. And then the weekends, you know, tacos, pizza, whatever you want. Right. If you just do that every week, you're going to see, you're going to receive results over time, but it, ne it never happens like right away. Right. And the people that are high performers are like 85% consistently than just hundred percent in terms of effort when they feel like it. And to me, that's, you know, they have that goal they work towards. And you, you, let's say you have your daily number, right? If you do that, let's say you hit it 80% of the time, but you make the effort hundred percent of the time, that's where th things are going to work out. So I, I thought that was, I mean, it's so basic. That's the great thing about real estate. It's not that complicated of a business. Like, it's not like we need to sit here and figure out how to like cure cancer or like launch a rocket. It's okay if we do like these eight things. And I don't even think it's eight. I think it's really like five. If you do five things, you can have a really great career as a realtor. Like manage your time, make your calls, follow up with people, mm -hmm. like understand the market and do what you say you will. You're going to be good to go. I mean, it, it's literally that simple. So that's one of the cool things about this business. So good stuff from Curtis. And I liked how he kept it simple and you know, that, that, that makes it a lot more attainable and it is easy to get overwhelmed. I mean, it, when you, when you break it down, I mean, you, you mentioned that Sarah, right? Like, let's say you want to call, I don't know, you want, let's say you want to sell hundred homes a year, right? Sounds pretty daunting. Imagine if I told you that was your goal right now, what would you say? Better get working. Yeah, better get, <laughs> now let's take it and say, all right, so you got to do less than two a week, mm -hmm. a little more manageable, right? Like it's just a math game and setting those micro commitments. So, which is also still a big number. Don't get me wrong. hundred homes a year is not easy, but you get the point. So this comes from uh, Josh Grabensky, um, and he, you know, he really dove in and and really digested a lot. So, so I want to set bigger goals and focus on the two thousand dollar an hour tasks versus the twenty dollar an hour actions. What do you think? Yeah, I, I the twenty dollar an hour actions. I guess you have to figure out the things that are going to really make 
the big difference in your business? Is it, it can, can you delegate some of that time, you know, instead of you spending all your time trying to make everything right and perfect, is there someone else that can help you with that? Can you delegate? And will this action make that big of a difference? Yeah. Genius. <laughs> like it's <laughs> such a good takeaway, I think, because mm-hmm. um, it's really easy to get very caught up in these $20 an hour actions. It's easy to like literally like wake up in the middle of the night and like think about them, you know? Um, and have you done that before? I have. I so have I. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so um, when really it's stuff that like isn't that big of a deal or could be delegated to something else or like isn't the best use of your time. And um, but when you're kind of like in the motions and you're going through some of these different transactions, it is very easy to really focus on those those minor things rather than being like move on and let's like keep building the business. It's it's so easy to get uh caught up on those those smaller things. Well, and and you think about it, right? That that like there's all these small things that come up and you can't and even if you're a single agent, which I, I one of the big things I heard, I'll talk about that in a second. That was one of my takeaways. You can delegate a lot of stuff to like the lender, the title company, the contractor that you're you're having go out and look at a property, the other agent in the transaction, right? And and this goes for a team member too. There's a lot of things you can delegate that doesn't mean you have to have an assistant or something else. There's other people that will get it done. And that goes a long way in just saying, hey, you know what? My time's more valuable than this. You can handle this. And that's a hard place to come from because a lot of people, they think they have to do everything because no one's going to do it as good as they will. Right. Have you felt that way? Because I have like, oh, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll write this I'll email ask. better or I'll, you know, I'll make this phone call better. And that's not always the case. And when you start to delegate those couple of things, then you get that extra time that you didn't have otherwise to either go do something you want or something that's going to you know, like, like meet a client or make a new contact or, or go on another appointment. And that's what real estate agents need to be focusing on. When I heard this, I thought of like the four things, right? Making contacts setting appointments, going on the appointments and negotiating and writing contracts. Those are the four things every agent should be focusing on because those are the income producing activities. Mm -hmm. So Josh Hagan, our sales manager, he, uh, yeah, he, I mean, he's been shot out of a cannon since he got, did you guys notice the difference in him? (laughs) Totally. Oh, a hundred percent, 110%. (laughs) Like I I had a call with him on Sunday after, and I had to go on like this fishing trip over the weekend with my, my family. And that was miserable. We caught one fish, whatever. We're up at 5 a.m. on Saturday. But I, I talked to him and I'm like, wait, do I have the right Josh here? Like, who am I talking to in the best way? And I'm, I'm, I've said this a lot and I'm going to keep doing it because I give him a lot of credit for jumping both feet in. And this was, this was another like really simple thing. So it came from Carolyn Young, who's a, a friend of mine. Uh, she runs a team down in like the uh, Washington, D.C. area. Focus on one thing, prospecting to build your pipeline. What do you think? Simple, but it's not done as <laughs> as consistent. <laughs> Agents hate prospecting. Yeah. Most agents hate prospecting. But it's vital. It's vital to building the business. Yep. So I agree 100% on that one. Yeah. Yeah, Pretty simple. A simple simple thing that can really just produce big results. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll keep going. Josh Josh kept it simple for us, but (laughs) acting very different, which I love. Um, Michelle Poehler, who uh, she was one of the keynotes. And this came from Janine Marie from our team. Uh, Michelle Poehler, she, uh, she's at Hello Fears on Instagram. Um, she said that uh, she came out and said, instead of asking what's the worst thing that could happen, we should say what's the best thing that can happen. And in doing so, we do not allow fear to stunt our growth. Sarah, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, that's that's a great takeaway because um, it is it is easy to to be afraid to go out or try different things or think like that's not going to work or what if they say this or yada, yada, yada. Um, And if you focus on like, what's the result that I want to come from this and like, just give it a try, like something good could come from this. Um, it'll push you to, to try more things and not be closed off, uh, by bad things that could potentially happen. Yeah. Again, it goes back to mindset. Yep. Positive, positive, positive. Three to three that you got to say three times. Um, (laughs) we'll just do that from now on the show. Any topic, we'll just repeat the word three times. (laughs) The, this is something that I have to coach buyers sometimes, like what, what's the worst thing that can possibly happen when you put an offer in, right? Yeah. What's the best thing that could possibly happen? So I use this a lot in my own business with my buyers. So for me, that's, you know, it's everything. Yeah. 
I took the words right out of my mouth. I mean, because we do, like people are scared when they go and make these offers, right? Like mm-hmm. they're freaking out. Like yeah. what, what happens if I get the house? Like, well, it's, it's, I don't <laughs> know if I want to buy this place. Like, what am I going to sell my place? And, and fear is, is, and then stress coming to the real estate transaction so much. A lot of people don't talk enough about the stress that agents go through. Like I know I've gone through this where it's like, man, I got, I got to sell some houses this month or I'm in a lot of trouble here financially. And, and it, 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 because that's what a lot of people think. And instead of having a scalable business, but if you ask yourself, what's the worst thing that happens if I make this phone call or what's the worst thing that happens if I write this contract on this house that my wife and I love that we'd feel like we'd be getting a fair price. Say what's the worst thing is we don't get it and we're crushed forever and we die. Like, I mean, <laughs> that, that's where it could go. Versus the best thing that can happen is we get the house, we have, you know, we're very happy or I get an appointment, I have a great new client I can help. It, it's such a mindset shift. And really, it's like that, like positive Pete versus negative Nancy. Yeah, I think that's that's so critical because there's so many negative people out there mm-hmm. and negativity. It's like it's like a fungus that you cannot get rid of. Yeah. It just grows. It get what gets worse. Um, you know, think of like an infection, like you get like a hangnail and all of a sudden, like next thing you know, like your, your hands all messed up. I mean, it, I'm being very extreme here, but that's what negativity does. And, you know, that, that, that simple changing that literally one word, what's the best that can happen versus what's the worst that can happen. It changes everything. I love that one. It does. All right. We got three more here. And then Nick, um, 62% of people decide if they will hire you when you first meet, according to Ben Swavely. We talked about this last week on the show. What do you ladies think? Yeah, I uh, I was surprised at that number. Actually, I was like, "Wow, okay, yeah, it's a big number." Um, so first impressions count. Like that's always been a saying, and it's the truth. I mean, first imp- you don't get a second chance to make a first impression, right? Oh, so absolutely. First impressions definitely are important. Yeah, and I like. For me personally, with the the first impressions and everything, I like to always try to give myself a buffer so that if anything, like as as far as scheduling appointments or or getting somewhere, because the worst is when you you pull up, you're running late, you hit all the red light, <laughs> you're like behind frazzled, the trash truck, <laughs> and if you just like give yourself a couple extra minutes to feel relaxed and calm and actually be yourself when you walk in there, um. I feel like it makes a huge, a huge difference. So yeah, those first impressions do mean everything. <laughs> right. And even if you are running late and things happen and come oh, up, yeah. when you finally get there, you know, you have to hide all that. You just come out and you're like, hey, hi, how you doing? I'm Stacy. You know, yeah. you just, you fake it. Like you don't bring all that negativity again. It's a, right. that mm-hmm. negative vibe and that frustration and, you know, you just were beating traffic and everything. Um, so it's so important how you present yourself when you first meet folks. Well, it's your physiology and body language, right? I mean, you, if someone and has energy. bad body language, you can, you can see that within seconds. Like, I mean, when I say bad body language, you probably all think of somebody that comes in the room and it's like, uh, they're here, right? It just sucks the energy out of the room. And that's really important. And I would say even further, you're running late. Mm-hmm. Most people don't call and tell people, Hey, I'm running late. Like right. things happen. Mm-hmm. I mean, Traffic is now a thing again after 18, 19 months. So literally saying, hey, I'm running 10 minutes late. My last appointment ran over. Like that's a first impression, even though you don't think oh, yeah. so. Mm-hmm. And then people understand. It's like, hey, I'm really sorry. Hope this isn't a problem for you. Like just just knowing that you're valuing their time and you didn't mean to because a lot of people don't do that. Right. Uh, I mean, you know, at our team, we're, we're big on like suiting up. And like, I mean, you've seen how I show up at listing appointments where I'm, you know, I'm wearing like a suit, a tie, all that stuff because it's a job interview for me. Uh, I mean, that that that's really important. And what Ben went on to say at the meeting was like also like knowing the market, being the knowledge broker, which we talk about a lot, like making sure you un- like you're, you're coming with a place of value instead of like, hey, guys, let's let you in and then kind of flaking your way through the appointment. You have like a game plan at the appointment. So I, I couldn't agree more that it's your knowledge, your appearance, how you show up, like the body language you know, versus like the disaster coming out of the car and, and, and all that. I think that's great stuff. So love that one. Mm -hmm. Um, Being the mayor. So this was from Ron Stender. So basically being like the local brand in your your local market, like everyone knows who you are. So what what do you guys think about this? Mm -hmm. Well, it's self-promotion. You know, I I think it's it's valuable, too, if you want to scale your business. Um, Be the mayor, you know, know, know the the neighborhood, know the area, be able to field questions when people ask you. Um, I think it's really important. Again, be the knowledge broker. Yeah, I think it's a um, it's something that you have to do very mindfully. Um, you can't just be the mayor of anywhere. You know, you have to put in the time to yes, learn the area, to 
um, be able to answer all the questions that that people ask and to really investigate that uh, that spot, see what's coming up, know what potential listings could be coming and really just know everything about that area. And if you can put the the time and the energy and focus into making that happen, um, I think that that can certainly be an, an awesome strategy. I think those small details really go a long way. If you can suggest like, oh, right down here is this French Creek State Park and over here is this. I think that's part of being the mayor. Mm -hmm. Um, You're offering more value. Yeah. And I would also say getting involved on the community level, too. Like if you got Mm -hmm. kids, maybe you're involved in like the Home and School Association Mm -hmm. or like you sponsor like the Little League Mm -hmm. or you just show up at like community events and or, you, you, you know, those sort of things that it goes a long way because. It's one thing to you know, have your signs everywhere, which is which is great, right? Like we all want that. But if you're actually doing something that's meaningful and it's authentic to bring it back to Susan's takeaway that you have to be unapologetically yourself and do something you actually care about, that can go a long way too. Because then they see you're part of the community. It's not just I'm here to sell some houses because that's what people think of realtors. Like they look at commission yeah. breath and, <laughs> and they're like, oh, all this, all this guy or gal wants to do is sell another house. And you, and you can't do that. So um, I, I love that one. So Nick, we're not going to put you on the spot just yet. I'll give you, I'll give you, I had a couple. Um, the one that, um, you know, we, we talked about it from like a team level and then from uh, an agent level. I'm going to go with the agent level one that if you are, all you're doing is fitting in with your marketing, you're totally invisible. And I think there's so many people and especially agents, all their marketing is like, hey, look at me. Or, hey, I just sold another house. Or, hey, I did this. And nobody cares about that. They want to know what's going on in the market, how you can help them and doing innovative marketing It's so important. And there's so many agents that just think like, all right, I'm just going to post pictures on Facebook of all the houses I sell and not, not talk about anything else. And, and do you guys know agents like this? You ever see? All right. I mean, and it's so that that's like the typical marketing versus doing something that's actually going to deliver value because that's what people want. You can't be a well-paid clerk anymore. And I thought to me, that was a, just a major takeaway. What do you guys think about that one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And bringing value at a little bit more than how many houses you sold in that particular area. Yeah. What's going on in the community? Yeah, exactly. About that? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think that with social media and with anybody having the ability to just put up whatever, being able to show something different, so like everything else is just going to blend into the hundreds of other posts that you see that day. Couldn't agree more. All right, Nick Wolf, take major takeaway. <clears throat> Our big talker on the show here. Yeah. So I think my biggest takeaway was the team bonding. Honest with you. Love that. Yeah, because I wasn't really in the seminars that much, but it just it was just really nice getting to know people, not really like talking about work that much, getting, you know, more of a personal level. It was nice just, you know, coming back and, you know, everybody kind of just brought that home with them. And yeah. That's awesome. So you were there. Rate the energy before and after of, oh of the people that were there. Like, was, I mean, seriously. Like a complete 180. Like, cause I could like I feel like some people who came wasn't weren't really like, you know. I'm, I'm in Dallas. I had to, you know, <laughs> <laughs> no birds. Um, but um, anyway, yeah, no, the, um, I'm sorry. What was the question here? Big oh, takeaway, oh, team yeah. bonding and, and energy. energy. Yeah. No, the energy completely changed. Like after, after the first day, everybody just like, you know, wow. was way more motivated and um, Dallas. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Uh-huh. It was just nice. Yeah. We go out and have some drinks and uh, yeah, just got to know everybody a little better. Optional drinks. Yes. Optional drinks. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. All right. I think that's awesome. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I, I definitely, I mean, you can see it, especially some of the people that went. Oh, and, totally. You know. I can see it. Yeah. And everybody that went, they loved it. Hopefully yeah. you two will come next time. <laughs> Hopefully you don't have a baby right before the uh, summit's there. So that will... <laughs> all right. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a quick break. We talked all about Tom Fair. We're going to come back and we got about 10 minutes and we're going to talk about the scariest things you see in real estate on Tool Time Real Estate Radio on WWDB 860 AM. The real estate market is red hot. Have you considered taking advantage? Call the Tom Tool Sales Group at Remax at 610-692-6976 or visit our website, tomtool.com to connect and take advantage of these market conditions. Buying a home or already own one? We can help. I am Kevin Hamill from Alliances Insurance Agency. If you haven't reviewed your policies in the last three years, now's the time. New home buyers, there are a number of ways that we can help you get to that settlement table. Call us to find out more at 610-816-0043, extension 3, or visit our website, alliancesinsurance.com. Don't forget the S, it's for savings. 
When you're getting a mortgage, you shouldn't have to sacrifice great service just to get a great rate. At Mortgage America, we've been lending with this philosophy for over 35 years. We have access to great low rates without the complications and delays of big or online banks. We're a local Pennsylvania lender with loan officers that you can actually meet. As PHFA's number one lender, we specialize in all residential mortgage programs, including first-time buyer programs and low-down payment options. For your free pre-approval, call us at 610-439-8000 or apply online at mymortgageamerica.com. Mortgage America is the deposit MLS one have you considered a career in real estate? Do you want control? 15 seconds. Come. Whether you have a license or not, call us today at 610-692-6976 or visit tomtool.com. Join our team, the Tom Tool. Stand by. It's main line. All right, all right, all right. We are back for the final segment. On Tool Time Real Estate Radio on WWDB 860 AM. I'm Tom Tool. She's Sarah Timon. She's Stacy Mitchell. And we are talking about, I was actually inspired by our friend, the broke agent, Nick's new friend, the broke agent. Guy's ridiculous, but he made a post today. And I was, uh, and you know, Halloween's coming up. Kind of a fun segment. The scariest things you see in real estate, because I don't know about you guys. Like I see like sometimes an email come through or, I'm like at a showing or I'm like, oh, my God, what is going to happen next? And legitimately scared. So before I get into my list, like what 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 are the scariest things you see in real estate or you've seen in your career in real estate so far? And it could be scary in a funny way or maybe scary in like, oh, God, what's going to happen now? Or is this person going to blow up at me on the phone? Because this is this happens way more than people think. <laughs> um, I would say one of them, like when tech things don't work properly, like so. <laughs> For some of the electronic lock boxes, you have to um, update the app occasionally on your phone. And I've gone out before, went to use one, and the Wi-Fi, I like wasn't really connected to Wi-Fi. I couldn't get the app to update. And so you're just like sitting there, like I just like restarted my phone a couple times. Cause like for me, if something doesn't work, I'm like, turn it off and turn it on and see if that fixes it. <laughs> so and just being like, oh my God, like please, <laughs> please update. And then uh I think after a couple off and earns it, it actually, it did work. But when tech things aren't working and I like don't know how to fix it, um, I hate that. <laughs> I, I think everyone's going through that. I mean, like you're writing an offer and dot loops down or yeah. doc, like, and, oh, or, my gosh. or like you said the app right. or like electronic lockboxes in general, just like, I'm just like, oh my God, we're not gonna be able to get in this house. I got to right. come back. That's a great one. Especially if my phone is getting ready to die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've been there too. Oh yeah. <laughs> Low phone battery is a good one yes, too. Like yeah. when it goes uh -huh. red, like yep. uh -huh. you have a droid. I don't know what color that goes, but <laughs> it just goes black. Yeah, black. That's all. It just turns off. <laughs> just turns off. <laughs> Stacy, what about you? Well, I, I have numerous of them, but the cat that runs out, that actually happened to me. And so I was chasing down the street, the cat, because <laughs> you know, you, what are you going to say yeah. Yeah. to the seller? All right. Yeah. You know, sorry, you're, cat bolted out the door so yeah i had to go scramble catch the cat it was successful so um i think i came out with a couple scratches but that's much better than having to face a seller and you know admit to what had happened um so i'm and the very buyer doesn't like your house. <laughs> <laughs> so i'm very diligent about reading the instructions if a cat's in the house um, the other thing that I find scary is multiple dogs because it is a dog's world. I mean, like everybody has not just one, but two, three, four dogs. Not that they scare me because I'm not afraid of dogs, but I'm allergic to them and they ultimately want to jump all over me. <laughs> um, so that that is kind of a scary thing. <laughs> one more I have to say <laughs> is hoarder houses. If you've never shown something. Imagine the Halloween that. music playing when you walk into those <laughs> houses, right? <laughs> I experienced those a lot. And you're trying yeah. to pick out the positives. <laughs> Nick, what's it like that for you walking in there like, hey, come photograph my house. And it looks like there's like a dead body in the yeah, basement. I just can't believe they let me into the house. Yeah. Like, like you knew I was coming today, right? Right. Like, yeah. That's what I don't understand. What do you do, Nick? Just act normal? Just Yeah. They're like, well, it's funny because they're just like, yo, do you want me to move this? Move that? I'm like, no, the whole place is screwed. Like, just leave it. And, uh, yeah. I think your response should be exterior only. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. And then walk out. That, that, I mean, the, the I've had a cat run out on me too. And I was okay. just like, what am I, and I ran into a bush. I'm like, I'm not getting <laughs> this get a cat. I got all these nice clothes on. And I, I don't, I don't get that one. Um, one I find is pretty, is, is the dad that shows up to a home inspection that you've never uh, met before, right? Yes. Like it's their kid's first house. They're like in their 20s or 30s. The dad has been to nothing. You never even met this person. 
hey, I'm here for the home inspection. I actually know he's like got his flashlight on, yeah. looking at the heater. And the guy's Taking like, notes. and the guy's like an accountant. He has no, no clue what's in the heater. And just like, man, I, I'm just going to give you the termination now for this because it's going to be over. Right. Um, also, like the dog that sounds like really vicious. Like I, I, yeah. I've, ha I've had a cat attack me before. <laughs> where I walked in the house, like jumped on my arm and like I had like a leather jacket on and it like scratched my jacket. And I mean, the, the pets like I don't I don't know yeah. about you, but strange pets are, and, or if it's like a pit bull or something like I mean, like I would be like concerned like they bite my hand off. Yeah, they're, you're coming in their territory. The very first open house that I ever did. Um, I was there for a little bit and then realized that there was a cage on like a tank type thing on the floor and I didn't see like anything in it. And, you know, I'm like, all right, I guess they're like already moving. Like, who knows, blah, blah, blah. I'm cleaning up and this wasn't my listing and the seller got back and I was like, Hey, so like, is what's up with those like empty, those empty cages? And he was like, Oh, there's snakes in there. And I was like, <laughs> oh. what? <laughs> I've been <laughs> this close the whole time and like where is it I don't see it I guess it like they can like coil up pretty little underneath their little rocks but whew, depends what kind of scary. snake though I mean like what if it's like hey, it's a boa constrictor or something like it something was, ridiculous it was something like scary sounding like it was it was some type of constrictor, <laughs> constrictor. Um, but I was like whew, no <laughs> I have to say also sellers can be kind of scary at times um we had an experience yeah, yeah. And my fear was when I got up in the morning, if if I saw an email that came over that was time stamped like 2.30, 3 a.m., I knew that the seller was on some kind of tear. I don't yeah. know. But I was afraid, terrified to open the email to see what was going to yeah. be in that email. Yep. <laughs> it's I've had scary. some pretty crazy sellers where there was, there was one in particular where I think um, he was selling it for an estate, agreed to everything. And... I don't know what happened with this guy, but literally we would get like message after message after met. Like, it, I mean, no, no person, no sane person communicates like this. Like, I mean, I don't know. I call you guys once and leave a message. I, apparently that's not the etiquette anymore. You keep calling and texting until someone picks up. Yep. That's pretty scary. <laughs> so watch out realtors. This is your Halloween segment on tool time, real estate radio. If you want to follow Sarah? She's on Instagram. It's T Y underscore T Y T I M E tie underscore tie time. Stacy's at the number two Mitchco two M I T C H C O. I'm at Tom Tool three R D at Tom Tool the third. You can Google the show on Facebook or YouTube. Just hit Tom Tool Sales Group. If you want to email us? It's info at tooltimeradio.com. We'll be back next week. This is Tool Time Real Estate Radio on WWDB eight sixty.